good morning to all of you who are watching from home and our thanks to Doug for being here to, to uh, record the service for us. Our apologies if, if you're missing the live stream this morning. We're going to be adjusting things just a little bit uh, and trying to deal with the, the kind of rapid changes that have happened here recently. As many of you already know, you, everyone should have received a phone call and, and we also sent out an email last night uh, mentioning that uh, the bishop had sent a letter on Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, about uh, suspending services once again. So uh, this, this kind of revisiting the, the video taping and, and readjusting the service possibly shortening it a little bit is, is what we're what we're looking at. So uh, we would appreciate your patience with, uh, with any, uh, uh, any seeming stumbles that go on in today's service. And we hope that all of you who are viewing at home will, will continue to do this. And certainly I appreciate, and I, I know many of you have, have told me you appreciate Doug's willingness to share his skills and Make these, make these available to us so that people can view them from home. So with that being said, uh, I will, and, and I should say as well that I am very sorry that our, our in-person worship must come to an end. We've, we've been doing, that, doing this since early June, and uh, even though fellowship is limited, I think people have enjoyed at least seeing each other's eyes uh, behind the masks and, and just being here to, to worship and, and uh, have communion. So we will return to the spiritual communion prayer. And uh, as I said, I'll try to mention uh, the brief changes as we go along, uh, or, or just now, uh, including um, cutting back a little bit on the scripture readings. So, we appreciate your patience and appreciate your participation, whether it's from home or whether it's praying for Grace Church. Uh, thank you for all of that. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the collect for this second Sunday of Advent. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says 
says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us pray together that portion of Psalm 85 that's found in the bulletin. We will end with the refrain. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. On this 
second Sunday of Advent, we hear the call to prepare the way of the Lord. In both Isaiah 40 and then quoted in by Mark, obviously there is importance with the prophets, both Old Testament prophets and John the Baptizer, as Mark calls him. Most likely, the church in Mark's time had a collection of passages from the Hebrew or the Old Testament Bible used for Christian preaching. The phrases Mark uses, though, were not just limited to Isaiah, but also included Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Both announced God's coming, and both included messages to prepare the way. So we have in Isaiah some vivid images, most of which point to how the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. In comfort to his people, in clearing a path in the, through the wilderness, including the wilderness of our hearts. It's an effort to proclaim and to know without a doubt that we people are like grass and it lets us know our own place. Life can be frail and fleeting, but no matter what's going on, no matter what we're given to endure, even all the chaos and the fear and the anxiety around these recent increases in the COVID-19 virus, in spite of all of those things, the word of our God will stand forever. The Holy Lord, who is strong and steadfast and eternal, is also the one who provides for us, the one who lovingly gathers the lambs in his arms and keeps them close at heart, and gently, not firmly, but gently leads the mother sheep. And it seems so ironic that this is the reading for this second Sunday of Advent, because given all that we're going through with not only the politics and the chaos of the world, but the anxiety and concerns about this pandemic, we certainly need to hear about God's abiding word and about God's comfort. In this opening chapter of Mark's Gospel, we hear the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And as far as we know, this is the first use of the word gospel to refer to a written account of the story of Jesus' life and teachings. And of course, Mark's description of John the baptizer was that of a faithful prophet willing to prepare the way for someone that he knew was more important than he was. John had popularity and influence in his day on politics and religion, the politician knew the people respected him and responded to him because he spoke the truth and was true to his message. It's kind of a toss-up as to how often we hear the truth from our politicians in this day and age. But there were, in essence, two major themes to John's preaching. The Messiah is near, at the door, and to receive the Messiah we have to be prepared by repenting of our sins. John the baptizer gave his followers hope, and he gave them a path to enter that hope. It was simply to repent. It means to turn away from our sins. In John's turn, turn away from our sins and turn to God. Draw near and be close to God and keep close to God no matter what's going on in the ways of the world. Yet in this chaotic time of year, we could put it more simply than that. Being penitent is, in some ways, just a fancy way of saying that we know we're not perfect and we want to do better. We want to be better. And we need the grace of God given us in Christ Jesus. In preparing this sermon, one of the commentaries had an interesting comment about believers. And, it, you know, I first read that thinking, yeah, okay, I know, I've, I've 
understand that, I've heard it before, but something about the particular point hit me almost as though it was for the first time. It mentioned about how repentance is, has to be followed by gratefully receiving what God offers us. If we confess our sins, God forgives. All we have to do is believe and ask for forgiveness, but we also have to be willing to receive that forgiveness and the gift of grace that God gives us in Christ our Lord. And in some ways, those who can't believe or refuse to believe are refusing the gift. And part of our being willing to receive the gift of forgiveness and grace and love and comfort that God makes available to us any time and any day and any age, no matter what's going on in the world, in order to receive those, we have to believe. And we have to recognize that we need forgiveness. We need God's grace. We need God, period. And it's so easy for us to overlook that. And that's part of what this theme of preparation in Advent is about. Make straight the way of the Lord. Get the obstacles that, that are in our lives that keep God at a distance or keep us from being as close to God as we would like to be or that keep us from being better people, those obstacles have to be removed. And with God's help, they are. God finds a way. It's not, it's not up to us to build the highway, but it's up to us to walk that path where, and to get around the obst obstacles that might try to, or attempt to keep us from God. There's a story of a little boy playing near a grandfather clock, which had been in his mom's family for years. It was one of those grand old clocks that chimed on the quarter hour, and then whatever the time was, it chimed on the hour. He had his toys spread out on the floor, and it was close to lunch, and for some reason, the old clock, just as it began to chime for noon, got stuck. And he was learning his numbers, and he counted the chimes. And he stopped playing, and when it went past 12, he just looked at it for a minute. And when it kept chiming, he listened, and as it continued, non-stop chimes. Well, he ran into the kitchen, and he told his parents, Mom, Dad, it's later than it's ever been. Come and listen and see. Advent reminds us it's lighter than it's ever been, and we're preparing not only to celebrate the birth of Christ, but to celebrate his return as well, whenever that will be. And we're preparing by accepting God's love and grace and inviting Christ to be present in our lives to lead us around any obstacles and to lead us on straight paths of righteousness and goodness and truth, that our lives may be a blessing to God and to one another, and that we may delight in doing God's will. With his help and with his grace always. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who, who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in him and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. And this morning we invite you to pray especially for all those on our intercessions list and all those family and loved ones that we have who need, who stand in the need of prayer. We pray also for all those in the medical field, for first responders and for nurses and doctors and those who are battling this COVID virus on a daily basis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. And this morning we pray for the repose of the soul of Nancy Bowen, wife of retired Bishop David Bowen, who passed away earlier in 2020. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And you are invited this time to offer your prayers and thanksgivings. The sanctuary candle was given this morning by Hank and Mary Cabot to celebrate their anniversary. We pray for a safe pregnancy and delivery of a healthy child for Yuka and Tim. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Matthew's Ashland, Harcourt Parish Gambier, and Grace Mansfield. We pray for those serving their country in the armed services. And we pray for all members of our Grace Church family, and today especially for Jim and Nancy Irvin, for Dale Lesby and for Maynard and Carol Evans. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. Oh. <laughs> we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by, by what we have, have done, done and by, by what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace to all. And peace to all. <laughs>
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. And together, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own will we give thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and prayers. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And since we have been instructed not to partake of communion during this time, we will return to the Creator for spiritual communion and pray that together. Let us pray. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish to always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I invite my, I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. I opt to wait until the time when we can share communion together as one church family once again. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, you declared your love, gave us grace and open the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.